This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. Hello, welcome to Chats with the Chatfields. This is a podcast to expand your idea of what impacts veterinarians, pet owners, and basically all animal lovers in the galaxy as humans. We are your hosts. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. If you have not yet subscribed to our show, why not? Just go to chatfieldshow.com and subscribe today. And if you've got a message full of love and positivity, you can find me at Jen at chatfieldshow.com. As always, for all of you other folks with some real questions and some real interest, you can find me at Jason at ChatfieldShow.com. Okay, straight away, straight into it we go, friends. Welcome into the chat room. Um, we have we have kind of a different kind of guest today. Wouldn't you say, Jace? I don't know. I don't know As per the use, you did not read not, your, not, your production I, notes? There is no, I, I don't even know what you're talking about, production notes. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, listen, uh, people have been asking uh, for an episode about this. It's one of the hottest topics in veterinary medicine. It's one of the hottest topics in all the pet owner forums. And so we thought naturally that we'd bring someone in to tell us all about it. That's, um, it's, 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 if we're not anything, we're always ahead of the curve. So it's perfect. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about different. This is exactly where we need to be, right on top of the wave, right? It's true. Does everyone hear his? His excitement because today we're finally we're doing an episode uh, that he has been wanting to do forever forever like forever that's I, right i didn't say that i, I said you it said correctly. forever okay well forever anyway so enough of the chitty chatty uh let's bring in our expert guest so we have with us today a journalist dun, dun, dun. No, yeah don't nothing be scared. don't be don't scared, be scared a journalist yeah i'm supposed to jump in yeah. <laughs> so we have a journalist. We have in the chat room today, Emily Brill. And just so that you know, she's credible. She's bona fide. She is for real. <laughs> um, she actually um, has been a freelance journalist for BuzzFeed, The Atlantic, China File, and uh, did some work in CBS News's Beijing Bureau. Very yeah. Cool. That's before... Like all that's before, uh, she is became and is currently the executive editor and founder of the Canine Review. And if you don't know what we're talking about, then you should head to thecaninereview.com and check it out. So we welcome, we welcome the press, we welcome the media, the journalists into the chat room. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're very excited. Um, so I don't here's think the thing. It's just yet, right? I know because we're in here. We're gonna grill you. We're flipping mm. the script on it's the journalist. Weird to be on the other side of the of the interview. <laughs> yes. Um, so we are gonna ask you about something, but before before I want everyone to know, all of our listeners to understand why you're here is because I don't think I've come across anyone as passionate about pet insurance as you are. And so that, I, I mean, I know you're like, you're an investigative journalist. You love the news. Um, you love the story. How does that get you to being so passionate and so incredibly well-informed about pet insurance? How'd that happen? What's the story there? Um, I, I love, um, I love great business stories and this, I, I this I think is going to be is one of the great business stories of the decade and will and and it's I so far we've had it all to ourselves at TCR. That's um, true. I don't see too much coverage about pet insurance, but I'm thinking there you was mean, a you dog. You mean pet insurance as a business is going to be the best the, was that what you're saying like like the overall So the story of yeah. so the so the so the story of pet insurance is fascinating because it intersects so many different categories. It, 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 you know, healthcare, veterinary medicine, um, pet industry, it, it intersects all the different categories of, of the pet industry, but it also gets into like larger um, topics of, of um, it's, a, it's also a human interest business story. For, mm -hmm. for, for um, sure. That's yeah. part of the biggest part of it is the human right. interest part of it. Right. Yep. Right. And so, so, but I was thinking there was like maybe a dog, a cat, a ferret, something in your background, because you didn't just wake up one day and say, huh, pet insurance. How about that? Yeah. There's usually some personal, personal touch. Right. To it. There's definitely, and that's actually what, so I have a, I have a completely crazy, uh, uh, yellow Labrador who was a field Labrador. So it, she was bred for bird hunting. Yeah. Um, and she's nuts. And <laughs> Okay, I don't hold back. And um, started spending 
tons of hours and money in uh, bed offices. And everybody kept asking me, don't you have pet insurance? Don't you have pet insurance? And I didn't know what the hell they were talking about right. because <laughs> I've, been living, I've been living in, in North Asia for, uh, um, for, for the past four years. Wow. Um, before, before Beijing, I was in Korea. So mm -hmm. I just didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And I also started to get pissed off because I didn't understand why I didn't know anything and why nobody was, why my veterinarian hadn't told me about it. Yep. Um, why? So if there was really this thing that could, that would be paying for my vet bills, which were getting were metastasizing, yeah. how could anybody like not a cancer, know like a yeah. cancer, they were metastasizing so growing exponentially be, with a field yeah. lab. <laughs> so how could nobody know about this? If this were not some scam. So, right. so there's, so, you know, the journalist in me thought, okay, well, everything in my world is the answer to everything in my world is to do a story about it. So, right. so Makes I just sense. started. Yeah. So it, so it began actually as a, as a reporting project. I started to, in my quest to research pet insurance for myself. It, it sort of evolved into a reporting project for Buzzfeed. We, so I, that's, I would tell you, we, we, I, I love that. Because you set out to find some answers. There weren't any. So you started sharing, right? You started providing some answers for other folks who might be looking yeah. about what yeah. it is. And so yeah. um, we I don't want to interrupt the conversation as we're going to get into some nitty gritty, some things that all pet owners and veterinarians should know about pet insurance and yes. the current state of the industry. But before, so because I don't want to interrupt, we're going to take a break now. Hang out, people don't bail out on us. We will be right back after the break. And then we're gonna get into what are the questions you should be asking about pet insurance if you're looking to get a policy. All right, hang on, we'll be right back. It's Dr. Jen the Vet, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Latson. He's got an incredibly interesting story all about Full Bucket Health. My college roommate and vet school housemate, Dr. Rob Franklin and I, were collaborating on some cases. Both of us were struggling with diarrhea in some of our patients, whether it was after a procedure or after, after an illness. So we created a formulation, but we didn't want to just create a formulation. We also wanted to create a movement in animal health for being able to help animals in need through the use of our products that we develop. That really has resulted in our one-for-one -one giving program, which we're re really proud of, as much as we are our formulations for dogs, horses, and cats. And so if you wanna know more about their one-for-one -one giving at Full Bucket, or if you're interested in better supporting your dog, cat, or horse's digestive health, head over to fullbuckethealth.com to learn more. Okay, we're back and we are back with um, Emily Brill, who is an investigative journalist who covers, well, covers the pet industry, but more specifically the pet insurance game and talking about all about pet insurance. Okay, so now we know how you got to this passion project with the canine review. Um, how so, long ago was that? Yeah. That was in 2000. 17 okay 2017 yeah, that's what i was thought yeah so not not too long ago not yesterday but you've been working on this for a while but it's not like you know 20 right i mean the canine review we didn't actually launch tcr until the, until late 2019 right okay um because it, it it took me a while to to go through the process of right. deciding i didn't want to have editors anymore ah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> how do you how do you get that? I I'd like to not have editors, but I think the world is more comfortable with me having editors. But uh, right. anyhow, so um, so I guess that that's the thing. So <laughs> you started researching this because you had a need. You needed pet insurance for your yes. for your pup. So if I'm a regular pet owner, um, well, actually, let's just say I'm not. Let's just say I'm a veterinarian. Well, like, how does how does pet insurance even? work because I've seen like I've seen people mention it when I've been in the emergency clinic at two in the morning um how does it even work so I there are three key things people need to know um first things so the first thing is when you go on the internet to research pet insurance the first thing you need to know and this is going to sound really counterintuitive but okay it's it is a it is, a, it is the correct advice. Do not do price. You cannot shop for pet insurance based on price. Okay. And I know that's not going to make any sense, but the reason that you, you can't use price is because 
these policies are mostly based on what's called age-based pricing. So they're priced in a way to get you in the door. Um, they're priced very, they're they're priced mostly um, on the cheap at the start, at the outset, when the dog is young, and then they just get, they just increase with age so that by the time you really need the policy, and but by the time you really need the insurance, the premiums are so high that you can't afford them anymore. Okay. Um, okay. So so the price that you're seeing is not the price you're going to be paying. When my dog is 10. Correct. Okay. So, so can I get insurance and, I, and everyone please recognize she don't, she does not represent a pet insurance company at I all. Do. She's just a passionate and engaged <laughs> person. No, not only do I not, a, repre- if, not, if only do I not represent a pet insurance company, but I, they all pretty much hate me. So, okay. Because, because she reports on them for the canine review, right? right? Okay. So, uh, so we're saying that, so she's just, uh, she's not making a specific recommendation for you or your pet. We want you to do that on your own. She's just giving us information. Okay. That's the disclaimer and it's out. So, uh, if I have like a, if if I have a six-year-old dog, is it too late for me to get pet insurance then? Um, if you have a six-year-old dog, is it too late for you to get pet insurance? Um, uh, it depends on the dog. I mean, it, it, it usually, if the dog has never been to a veterinarian, <laughs> you might be able to you might be able to get a policy and not have any pre existing conditions on the policy. The Ooh. the is, so the issue with so the issue with pet insurance is that pre existing conditions are not covered. No, by the way, no carrier covers pre existing conditions. Any carrier that says they do cover pre existing conditions is full. Of shit. So oh, all right then. Um, and, and we'll have the bleep button going. <laughs> Love it. Um, passionate people. Would, passionate. Yeah, and I would and I would really if if they're if they're telling you they cover pre existing conditions, that's a that's a red flag. That's a that's deceptive marketing and just just stay away. Okay. Um there's no such thing as a as a carrier that covers pre existing conditions. And if they give you the impression that they're doing it, they're just they're I that's a I I would take that as a very bad sign. Um, okay. So pre-existing conditions are not covered, which means that if you have a dog who's six, um, your dog probably has some pre-existing conditions yep. and they won't be covered. So that's the issue with with joining when, when your dog is six. Okay. Um, so you should, I, so ideally, ideally you're saying like a pet owner, you get the, you get the pet as you get a puppy, you get a kitten, you get a ferret, you get whatever. Um, you should get that policy in place at the time that you get your pet. You should. Absolutely. You should have the dog as you should have the policy as soon as you have the dog, if not sooner. Some some okay. of the carriers allow you to get the dog, allow you to get the policy before you before the dog is even born. Um, wow. Companion does allow that. Yeah. OK. Look, what if I have a six year old dog? Right. This is it. And I'm not trying to tell people how to commit this, but I'm not a big fan of insurance companies either. You have to have them, but they're like a necessary evil. You have to mm-hmm. have them. But man, they drive you crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, human car insurance doesn't matter. But what if I have a six year old dog uh, and I tell the insurance company, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm a terrible owner. Uh, I've never been to the vet. How on earth are they going to find out what's true or not? Yeah. How That's... do they know about a pre existing condition? I mean, they, they're only going to know it if you tell them. Right. Well, here's, here's how they do that. They, there's something called waiting periods um, that- Sure, like I have that with my with my insurance. If yeah, I like have, a 60, you know, 90. I have, six, I have to wait six, six, three weeks or something like that and make sure nothing, my teeth don't fall out or something like that. And they cover me, right? It's the same thing. Right, well, so insurance companies do this thing where they used to be able to do, um, many of the insurance companies do maybe two, uh, two month, sure. three month waiting periods. Yep. Um, but that's slowly going away because now we're having finally the states are are passing legislation that is sure. banning these waiting periods. So what the insurance companies are left with now is they're requiring the vet. They're requiring Some kind of when exam, you, right? Yeah. yeah. So when you enroll your pet to be insured, you have to go for a a vet exam within twenty four hours. Um, wow. The insur- the insurance company does that because there's something called adverse selection. In other words, people, the, is this a theory that if somebody's dog gets hit by a car, they don't want that person then going online and, and buying an insurance policy. Right. Um, 
So that's to prevent that kind of uh, enrollment. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So that's the time, that like you, so they, they don't want you to enroll at the time of need. They want you right. already enrolled, have a policy in place as a shield, right. right? So that then the next day, if your dog gets hit by a car, then you go right. to the vet. And they knew the dog was right. healthy before it got hit by the car. Yeah, and, and from so their that perspective, everybody, that and so that everybody right. who has enrolled is not a, a, a pick owner of a dog right. who's been hit by a car. Right. <laughs> right. So now this sort of starts to sound like human health insurance a little bit, right? It everybody does. feeling that? It does, and it and for the most I. I will say it for the most, so every single pet insurance carrier um, with the exception of one is, is operated by carriers that do other insurance. They don't right. do, they, they're, these are carriers that also do life insurance, that do homeowners insurance. That do I think insurance. Flow, right? Flow from Progressive offered me yeah. pet insurance on the yeah. TV one time, kind of yeah. just mentioned it. Oh, insure your pet and your house and bundle and right. blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah, bundle so, your boat these, and your pet and, and your house. Yeah, I mean, right. so these are not animal health people. They're right. These are insurance people. No, I will these say, are money. These are business people. These trying are to make business money. people. Right. I will say, and I'm at liberty to say this because I, <laughs> I'm i not endorsing Trupanion. This is a company that has blocked our server. Um, yep. blocked our server. Um, I will say that Trupanion is a is the only company that does animal health only insurance, which is a good thing. Yeah, that is um, interesting. It is a good thing. Um, and I, it does speak to the sort of non insurancey part of their company. Okay. However, the, I would I would, you know, yes. given the given recent behavior, I would. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, make it has cause for concern. Cause for concern. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, so well, we have to reiterate one one more time. With yeah. everything that you do, it's buyer beware. Do your try. Do your best. Do your yeah. make your best decision. We're not here endorsing anything, but there is is a dearth, right? That's a, the big word for me. I don't. Know if that's right. A dearth of information out there about this stuff, and and maybe now there's almost too much information. You go on the internet and well, find everything. So. Well, there's uh, there's so there is a lot of information. There's not a lot right? of. There is not a lot of, there actually is no other uh, publication that does what we do, which is mm -hmm. focused news on the pet industry that is not sponsored by the people that we're covering. We don't take ads. We don't take sponsors. Right. And we, the only revenue we have is our, is our subscription fees. Right. Um, right. So head to the caninereview.com. Other... Everyone head to caninereview.com. The caninereview.com. And buy a right. subscription. Yes, you're, you're our revenue. That's how we pay for our reporters. And I right. and I think that's I, that's worth noting because, you know, there's no such thing as if you're not the customer, you're the product. Correct. And if you are reading, if you are consuming information on the internet about pet insurance, you just have to be conscious of who's paying for it. Yeah. Um, but that's, I, a, that's not unique to pet insurance. Like we, no, like, it's not. And nope. and our our listeners know that we like we 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 recommend being being aware of who's funding stuff at all times. However, it doesn't mean that information is bad necessarily. It just means you need to be aware. So but because, because unique, there's bias. But what is unique about pet insurance is that the I, you there are a lot of publications that cover human health insurance mm -hmm. that that are not crappy sponsored content. There's there the there's nothing else that does what we do. The joke is like every time I go to a regulatory meeting, I'm the only reporter who shows up for it. Um, and I, I am it. When I show up to cover mm -hmm. something, it's just me over and yeah. over and over again. It's yeah. just me. And it's because there's no other publication that's writing about it. So, right. so you said there were three key things that you thought that all pet owners should know about pet insurance. And the first one was be aware that the, um, the practice is to use age-based pricing. So yes. the older a pet is, the higher the premium, even well, if they've been enrolled, but then you, you didn't get us to the. So the when you see a, so when you see a policy things. that's charging $10 versus a policy that's charging $167, yeah. Don't think that the policy that's charging 167 is necessarily the ripoff. You should also look at the policy that's charging ten dollars as maybe the gimmick. Okay, that's, so that's like that's a bait and switch good. almost. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so that's one key thing. Did you have two other key things? Yes. So the okay. next, the, the next thing is uh, wellness plans. They are similarly a, uh, I would say, a shiny object. Okay. Um. They. They are used in, in, so they're not really part of what's considered insurance. They're prevent, these are things that you can plan for. They're not 
accident illness, mm -hmm. wellness plans are used by pet insurance companies to sort of distract you from all the stuff that they don't cover and all the stuff that they limit and exclude. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got to I, I, I have to have a distinction here. So are you talking about wellness plans? Like, because a lot of veterinary practices will offer no, 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 a no, wellness no. plan oh. Oh. versus, so, so okay, was, so those no, are no. different. What I was going to say is what you should be doing is buying wellness coverage from your veterinarian. Ah, okay. Oh, thank goodness. You should be. I was concerned is... where this conversation was said. We were, it was going to be okay, but we oh, no. yeah. have a distinct difference of opinion. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. No, okay. okay. So the... So that is allowed still who, in this country, I think. I'm, the maybe person not, who can so. offer you the the best wellness plan is your veterinarian because right. your veterinarian okay. has a direct has a is not a middleman and can and can give you the best the right. best bang for your buck. And your veterinarian also knows how to price your wellness plan and knows and by the way is also in charge of your of, your dog's of, health. Your dog's health, <laughs> right? Um, yes. And is the appropriate person for a wellness plan. The insurance company is not is by definition um, is going to charge more because they're 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 not the they're not the person charging directly. Right, they're the it's, middle the middleman. They're the third party. That's exactly right. So okay. it's not yeah. So so number one, age based pricing. Be aware. Figure out what that is. Number two, get a wellness plan from your veterinarian, not uh, from an insurance company. Number three. And it, but but if the insurance company is pushing wellness on you, be aware. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And then our third, the third key thing, because you said there were three, so I'm I'm counting on three, Emily. The third, the third <laughs> is 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 look at how these companies pay claims and do. How does the claims process work? Yeah. Okay. Um, so pause right there for yeah. everyone to be stunned, because to me that's the most interesting piece of this. Yep. How does the money move? Because I was a practice owner. <laughs> I was a practice. I owned emergency clinics, but now I've also worked in regular practice. And Jason, do you know how that works? Listen, I got three kids. And so I can only, I can only relate to human insurance. I don't have any idea how pet insurance works. And this is the biggest thing for me is how, how exactly does a claim work? Cause I, I think I sort of understand how human insurance works and I don't like it, but that's <laughs> yeah. what we got. Right? I, don't, right. I think we could all do much better without insurance, if we would just pay the doctor directly, we, you know, but, but we can't, we're not, we're never going to get that toothpaste back in the, in the bottle, in the tube. but no. I'm concerned that the hum, that pet insurance will also go that way. Mm -hmm. And, and if the veterinarians are the ones that are going to get totally screwed on this, I mm -hmm. think, and, and as well as the owners. Um, and so I'm concerned about how actually these claims are paid when you do need the insurance. If you were a, a yeah. responsible owner and you started your dog and you paid your your yeah. premiums every time on time. And now you have a dog, um, you know, that ate a toy that, or, or, or just not, you know, succumb to something natural. Got and, pancreatitis. But, yeah. But you have to pay and, and you're not getting any help from the insurance company. It just, it just, it, it, it's, have you ever, have people, you, but I am concerned about that. Have you ever been in a, have you ever had like an emergency room bill from human healthcare? M yeah. Several. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you kidding me? So, several. So, so three so kids, Emily, know. three kids. <laughs> right. So then you know that human healthcare costs are in a whole other. So I'm glad I, I would love to have this conversation. Human well, healthcare. So good. Human healthcare. Because this is a this is another sort of thing that people often get wrong about the topic of pet insurance. So mm -hmm. we all veterinary care is actually the opposite situation. Veterinarians need to be charging more money. Right. Um. The cost of veterinary care, I I know I'm going to get like shot for this, but you guys need to be charging more money. You're not overpriced. And the cost of veterinary care is not the issue. It's a very different human health care is a very different world. The, you know, you know, thirty well, thousand dollars. Gov the government's involved in human health care. Right. Correct. So just for everyone who doesn't know the the price. The, the 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 foundation of pricing in human health care is based on what the federal government will pay for Medicare and Medicaid. Right. And then you go from there. We don't have that in veterinary right. medicine. It's whatever the veterinarian is charging. Right. Um, but mostly have, veterinary you also care. You don't have liability. It, medical, a lot of it's a lot of the human stuff uh, is also it's not wait, based on that, but it's medical malpractice. You don't have medical malpractice. Um, we do. We do. You don't have three million dollars, but you. But what you don't have is the three million dollar. You don't have to pay the liability insurance that the human. Not, not at the same level, unless you do level, equine. But, 
Unless you well, do I think I think what this what this is exactly what scares me. I think the answer is not yet. Right. I, right. I think it's That's I think fair. our society is so wonderful that all we do is look for people who are trying to do a good thing and see how we can you know sue them to get yeah. money. And very I think litigious. That, <laughs> I think that uh, no matter what anybody does, I, I'm not. But sure as long as prevent- pets remain property, I mean, I, as long that, as but, we don't- and that's true. So right. as long as pets are legally property, then you can't sue for that emotional pain. And, and that's the thing that that exponentially increases the recovery for litigation. And that's the issue with humans, because, hey, if a human died, that's a big deal. OK, that's exactly. That's exactly and right. I mean, that, it, yeah. <laughs> and we have so I have an attorney, a couple of attorney colleagues in Florida, and they've said that as soon as pets are no longer property legally, um, they will stop all other practice. They'll hire 40 more associates right. and, and they will be, only no sue for wrongful death. That's right. that's, probably true. Yeah. that's 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 uh, that's probably right. <laughs> so, right. I mean, so so for for so I don't see right now. I don't I don't you know, you'd have to make pets um, not property anymore to have the kinds of problems we're seeing. And you'd have to have no price regulation like we see in human health care, by the way. Right. Um, right. There's there's I mean, we're the only country in the world that doesn't regulate um, health care costs. All of the other wealthy countries regulate this stuff except for us. Um, OK, so-, so if we if we get to the point of where where I'm standing in the emergency clinic at three in the morning with my dog because they have bloody diarrhea, they're giving me this diagnosis of HGE, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. They're telling me it's going to be, you know, twenty five hundred dollars for the first 48 hours of intensive care for my dog. I don't have that, but I do have pet insurance. And so what happens is they say to me, the veterinarian, I have pet insurance. Is it covered? And I say, I have no idea of what you're talking about. (laughs) Right. That's uh, So that's, and, and then, so that's what I, that was my number three, which is, um, which of these companies is going to, is going to cover that three in the morning emergency and and get you what you need at three in the morning. You know, if you does have a five thousand dollar. Does any company do that? Does any company pay directly? So, because what normally happens for me in regular practice and in the emergency clinic, what happened was they had a form. I signed the form as the the treating veterinarian. I said this was my diagnosis. They, I I signed the form and I gave it back to the owner, and then I fixed the pet. And the owner and, fought with the insurance company. And the owner wow. paid me. Like somebody yeah, paid me that night. Yeah. Wow. Um, so so again, the only company that does that, that can that can do it in seconds actually in real time is True Panion. And do they um, pay like the owner doesn't have to pay? Like the the clinic gets well, paid immediately? The clinic gets paid immediately. Oh wow. They, I didn't know that. I thought it was still yeah. direct pay with the owner and then reimbursement kind of no. like, you know, a lot of other no. stuff. They oh, okay. they can they they can get the money directly to the veterinarian. Even if they don't have even if you don't have their software, they Trupanion will like work it out with you over the phone. I mean, they're they're a crazily vet centric company. Okay. But they also are they're, they're also, also the very, most expensive, I think. They are. Probably. They are and you and that's the way to that is the way it's seen because the other companies do these pricing, these age-based pricing uh, strategies to get you okay. in. However, I would I would also point out that by the time your dog is ten years old, maybe even eight years old, you're going to be paying much more than you, what you might be paying on the True Panion policy. Um, oh, and you're, you might not necessarily be getting as much as you'd be getting uh-huh. um, as on a value sort of assessment than you'd be getting from True Panion. I. I don't, I personally, I personally, um, the claims process for me, mm-hmm. the idea that you would have to pay upfront is a, is a, is a deal breaker. I, I don't understand how that, if, if you have to pay all of that upfront and then wait to find out if you're even covered, that sort of defeats the purpose of insurance to me. Right. Um, and so, so you're talking about, so at three in the morning, I'm standing there, I have pet insurance, but I don't know if they pay. I right. don't, I don't know if they pay directly. So, and the veterinarian is still saying, look, someone like we, we, we can't do it for free because we have to eat as well. And so they, we got to pay all our staff. So yeah. we need something. So I got to give a deposit and then yeah. be ready to, so and the, the other owner and- is still having to pay 
even if it's covered by their pet insurance, most of the time the owner's having to pay to and then it. go get the money. They got to float it, right? And then to go get they, the money by making a claim. Yeah. And so and, it's and after that, the fact that the pet insurance decides if they cover it or not. They're like, oh, well, we only take, well, you know, it only takes two days. It only takes one day. It'll take three days, but that's still not fast enough for for not uh, 80, not everybody can float it people yeah mm -hmm. no, right. yeah and a lot of it depends on what you know unfortunately what part of the month it falls in whether you have yes. the money in the deal and you know right. it's just a normal everyday problem right. uh in the united right. states it's, it's, i i mean i think it i i think the re i think that is and i think when people ask why is it that only three percent of americans have pet insurance which is another fun fact like three that's crazy less, yeah it is it is considering the cost i mean Considering how expensive veterinary care is, I I wouldn't want to walk into a hospital with my crazy Labrador right now and be like paying out of pocket. I I feel like I would that would just suck. So I don't know why anybody is it, is it three percent of of pet owners have insurance in or three percent of people? Like what is it? Is it three percent of, of 3 pet owners? Three percent of it is three percent of the population i guess it doesn't matter it's a very low do, number in relation question. to the the bigger number of pet owners yeah so well it's, prob it's, it's probably a slightly higher percentage for pet owners but not much right versus the entire population yeah. but like it's it's probably still less than 10 percent. the percentage is probably yeah. the same but it goes anyways who cares um question. interesting that no i think a lot of it is lack of information i mean i really yeah. do i think, I, I think a it's lack of awareness ev every day people mm -hmm. are talking about it because it's becoming a thing um, and, and I think the insurance companies seem, I know when we were in school, Jennifer, I, I a long time ago, no, I agree. sort of on the horizon, that yeah. insurance is coming down the road. And it's not like we've been out of school for a hundred years. That was pretty recent. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Good job. And, um, and, and now it's a thing, but it's not, yeah. it's not, it's, 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 it's new, it's developing. And so <laughs> I'm always interested in talking about it. Uh, it's, from it's two, very, two perspectives, it's so. very overwhelming because you just, it's, it's so con there is information, but it's so much and it's so confusing and they don't make it easy. They just make it impossibly hard to navigate. Well, I think um, insurance in and of itself, the like the concept of insurance, right? So you're hedging against a risk and the likelihood of the risk coming about. And so I, I do think that that just by its very nature can be complicated. And especially with whether it's human health insurance or pet insurance, you're talking about insuring against risk for something that's alive and with all of the variables that brought about by different environments. So I think it's complicated no matter what. I, I think it would be really hard to make it simple. Um, and so I think that's that by its very nature. So I think that's the issue. But then you're right. When you have sort of, um, when you throw into that marketing and, um, you know, credibility of information available, um, et cetera. But I think that's where publications like the canine review come into play Right, is where you can, you can conclusively state you take zero money, um, you know, from health insurance or from pet insurance companies, um, except in the form of maybe a subscription and that's yes. it. It's yes. all subscriber based. There's no ad revenue coming to you. Yes. And so, but that also makes it hard for you to survive as a publication. It yes, it does. And I mean, we literally, so yes. And um, we, I, you know, we charge, so that's why we charge an obscene amount of money for a subscription. Our subscriptions are not cheap um, and people get angry because they can't get, they can't get access to our, you have to, there's a paywall every part of our website is paywalled and that's why um yeah. but the reason that is is because we don't want to be beholden to anybody and and we'd rather be beholden to you than to yeah. be beholden to the people we write about so i but guess i guess that's part of my my question and this is i thought i did think of this um last week actually when i was uh you know preparing for this episode jason Last week, did you hear that? I pre was preparing. Good for you. I'm thinking I was of preparing it. Last last month, forever for this episode. Okay. Great. Uh, anyway, so I did think about this um, because we have a lot of friends and the uh, they're members of the um, IBPSA, the International Boarding and Pet Services Association. Okay. Right. Shout out. Um, and so I was just I I'm thinking of what if I board my dog? So let's say I board my dog in a boarding kennel, and they get sick. I'm not there, but the boarding kennel, I've signed the paper that says that they should seek appropriate veterinary care for my pet if they become ill, right. um, because it's going to happen, people. Like, even if no one makes a mistake, everything is every done day. right. No, Some day. dogs get sick. Okay. 
So they take them to the vet. Well, is it covered? I'm not taking them. They're not in my, the pet's not in my home. They're at a boarding kennel under someone else's care. Right. Like what happens with that? Right. I mean, um, do you know? So most, yeah, most, I, was like, I was like, are you asking her that question? That's a tough yeah. question. To, I don't I don't it, know the answer. Maybe there's no answer. I don't know. Well, it depends. Well, if it's an illness that, that you, that you did not vaccinate the dog for mo I think all of the carriers would not cover that. Um, Okay, so, I could I could get even more granular with that if you want, because go for it. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, so so let's say that uh, because it costs money to determine that it's not vac that's vaccine good. preventable, well, right? Yeah, so that's good. You got to send out for you got to take that swab. You got to send out yeah. for that respiratory PCR to yep. determine that it's mycoplasma causing yep. this illness, not para influenza, bordetella, or adenovirus. That's a great. So so that's another. Some of these carriers actually will not, this is really awful too. They will only cover the diagnostic if the if you know the ultimate, answer. If you get an answer and the answer is covered. Okay. And, the, yeah. and, the ultim and ultimately, that, you know the what that sounds like? <clears throat> that sounds like every other insurance company I've ever talked to. That sounds like a catch 22. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just, yeah, I agree with you. It's terrible, but what, um, I mean, it's not the way my insurance company works, yeah, but yeah. It, it's the no, way. I mean, I, I don't mean specifically that I, I, I just yeah. mean in, in general, as you just feel like that's just doesn't it, seem fair. Right. So it, it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's terrible because you're, you're trying to, you don't know if you yeah. don't know what's wrong, you have to diagnose it. Awful. And then if you don't get a positive result, then you're out for the diagnostics. Well, um, but here, but here is the part of the thing though, is that I'm sure these insurance policies all have a different deductible. And so a lot of times that respiratory PCR that I'm talking about in this case where we have like a coughing dog, right? Um, whether they were boarded or not boarded, it doesn't matter, coughing dog. Uh, right. then, then, then number one, I hope you listen to Emily's tip number two, which is get a wellness plan through your veterinarian because yes. then they will have been appropriately vaccinated for the things that are possibly vaccinated for that can prevent that. Number two, the deductible that respiratory PCR I want to send out when combined with the exam fee, it probably is still within your deductible amount. So you're still on the hook anyway. Right. Yes. And so you're probably still okay. So you should still send that out <laughs> and then determine that when it comes back that, Oh, it was mycoplasma. There's no vaccine for that. Um, so now all the treatment should be covered once the deductible is met. Right. Yeah. And by the way, if your vet doesn't have a wellness plan, you should, just talk to them about it. And yeah. Yeah. To, doesn't mean they can't have a wellness plan. And, talk and friends, we have an upcoming episode. If it's not out already at the, at the time that you're listening to this on wellness plans through veterinary oh, practices. There you go. Yeah. So we're going to talk because those are two things that we agree should work in concert to protect your yourself and your pet so that you're able to provide that veterinary care at the standard that you would like to when your pet needs it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. But, it's, but don't let the insurance companies use wellness to, to sort of distract you from what they're actually supposed to be doing, which is dealing with illness and accidents. Okay. Um, so, so that's what, another key piece. Them, yeah. And many of them do many of them. You'll see that most of the description of the, of what they're trying to sell you is the is the wellness it's coverage wellness and there's correct, like correct. yeah and it's just like okay well what about the accident and illness oh yeah that's great and then they'll just i mean the marketing is all about the wellness coverage yeah, and that's a fact, that's a when, red flag when insurance <laughs> when when the when the pet insurance industry first started that is all that they covered right it they was covered. basically a wellness plan which then veterinarians said wait a minute we should you know we are doing this already and and, yeah. and that be that be, it's a several years of a little bit of fighting and veterinarians getting the information out there now i think it's it's getting yeah. out there and veterinarians also weren't the best as an industry at, at talking about this stuff. And now they're having, to learn. <laughs> I mean, they are, cause they really are veterinarians and they just want what's best for the pet. Sometimes yeah. that you have to talk about the financial aspect of that and which yeah. helps the owner help take care of the pet. And that's yeah. really all they want to do. A wellness yeah. plans are usually designed to make sure two things, your dog is taken care of at, for stuff they know is going to happen and, yeah. and to sort of force you to come back, you know, and have a look at the dog and make sure everything's okay. Yeah. And, and things like that, because all totally. they really care about is the wellness of the of the animal where maybe the insurance company not being the devil but always wants to just you know make money they're not in it to lose money for sure right 
And well, there's good and there's really good. There's really great people. We're not slamming insurance. Like there's really great people who are interested in the best care for animals working in pet insurance. It's true. But when we say insurance, we're saying she laughed at me. But when we say insurance, (laughs) we mean we mean I was was laughing because I because I, you know, there are some in in, during the course of my reporting, there have been some really egregious examples of 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 I I would say wrongdoing in the I, I. I don't know if you guys saw the the reporting we did on fetch by the dodo and the mm-hmm. thing that they did so they were try they were trying to pass a um language in their policy that was actually targeting veterinarians for exclusion um that 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 I caught because <laughs> like what do you mean like if you had a veterinarian you're excluded no, like what do you mean what, the language read that if you um if you're so if the claim was um somebody who was a business who was a business associate which is many veterinary so if you're a veterinary professional uh-huh. you're often going to use a business associate for your coverage because if you work in a veterinary hospital where would you go for right. a veterinary you go to the place you work correct because it's cheaper. so so the language read was was such that um any place you go with it um uh business associate business owner um a uh, co-worker um is excluded claim so let's say if i was working in a veterinary practice my personal pet got sick and i took them there for care they wouldn't cover any of it correct it was specifically designed to 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 exclude veterinary professionals and then in the next line or two it it the reason it gave was <laughs> was that veterinary professionals are moral hazards because um, I could be cheating the system. Correct. They thought I would be making up stuff in order to get money for the practice I think, that I work I at. I think what they thought is that nobody would notice that they were putting that language in there and wow. that they were doing any of that. That's they, sort of a shot at the credibility of veterinarians as well. Like no shit. I mean, um, like like we're going to like we're running an insurance scam. They I don't think they realized that at two in the morning I was going to be going through yeah. insurance filings and I found it. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, I put it up on our homepage and. <laughs> and so did, it. did they, did they, what was it? What was the response by the company? They ended up. So, so there is a, there was a, there were a couple of people with very significant social media audiences who, who started putting it all over Instagram Mm -hmm. and within, I think it took about two weeks and pet plan now fetched by the Dodo uh, came out and said, you know, we've thought about it and we changed our, we've changed our minds and we're not going to do it. (laughs) And that's what journalism does people. That's, that's called, that's called high impact policy reporting. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's that's fantastic. what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't want to be up reading the fine print of all insurance policies, uh, you should subscribe to the canine review, yeah. apparently. <laughs> right. I think that's no, the point. Right? It was, I mean, so. it was great. I mean, that, that was a direct, that's, I mean, you know, the idea that, and the reason obviously that they, that, that they were interested in excluding veterinarians is because I guess you guys take really good care of your dogs. So you might cost insurance companies more money. And they had calculated that you cost more money to cover than mm-hmm. the general population. So let's cut you out. <laughs> that wow. I mean, that was the calculation that was made. So yeah, wow. It was just like an that's, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. And so was that uh, the first the first company that you found that did that, that included veterinarians as a moral hazard? I have not found another company that that went to that extreme. What's 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 sort of concerning is that no company would would comment and mm-hmm. come out and, and against it and or condemn it the only company that would condemn it actually was Trupanion. the only none of the other insurance companies would 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 commit not to doing that not yeah. to doing that in the future uh-huh and nobody would condemn it or come out against it Wow. So this is why, which this was, is why insurance yeah, companies yeah. are out they're out to make money. And from a yeah. from a a 
you know, a bean counter sort of perspective, they're probably correct about that. Yeah. Right? They're probably correct. That, that, <laughs> I mean, from I, a I bean, from the, just from the numbers. That, like, I don't I, think that's, that's it's like the crazy. worst. I love that name. <laughs> but that that's it's just crazy that they would they would mm -hmm. they would do that. It is right? crazy. No, it's completely so. especially if you consider like you like you need better an insurance pen insurance companies need veterinarians. They to don't recommend exist them. without veterinarians, right? Right, right, right. 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 Like, insurance companies what, don't exist without right. doctors. Like, they what got were to be they, nice yeah. what, were, what were they thinking? How were they thinking that was gonna work? Like they, they yeah. were thinking exactly what you were thinking. They probably thought, well, we'll get away with it for a while. And and, here's, right. here's the thing. You would never do that on the human side. Right. On the human side, you would never, you would never say that, like, like a, a nurse. the pediatrician, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I would bet in the beginning they did exactly the same thing. They just one time. To, I'm not hating insurance companies. Their job yeah. is to make money. It's, it's a true. business. It's so true. So if if X is more expensive, I'm gonna see if I can exclude X and cover everybody. I mean, yeah. it's just, whatever. but but it's the just, thing you is, have to see it from their point of view, it's really, really, really astonished. It was probably yeah. the most yeah. astonishing. I bet it is. It sounds like what that make crazy. Sense. It was a crazy story. Yeah, and but the best, the, oh, I forgot the best part. The best part is that they had just partnered with the Dodo, which uh, is this animal rights blog. Right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's it interesting. A, it was a great. It was such a fun story too. It was. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was so, so much fun. Okay. So. Okay. So, I, but. Folks, so we're yeah, like the Dodo's logo everywhere. <laughs> right, right. That was really that was really like quite the um, the press event for them, I'm sure. Right. Um. So so what we want you to get want you to get out of this chatterboxes, if you're listening, is we're gonna put a link. Don't don't drive off the road again. We're gonna put links um in the show notes. We're gonna put a link to the canine review, um, a link to more information about Emily, um, but also um. <laughs> The top three things that she recommends that you know, if you didn't know them before this episode, you should know. Number one, age-related pricing is a thing. Look into it and be very aware before you start investigating insurance. Don't don't be fooled by marketing and fancy languages. Uh, number two, um, wellness plans are a great idea from your veterinarian. Yes. Yeah, you don't look to an insurance company for your wellness uh, coverage or planning or anything. Look to your veterinarian. We love that. Yes. And yep. then number three, hold on, I got to check my notes for this one. Number three, um, uh, it wasn't pre-existing conditions. Those are a red how, flag, though. Is, how the number claims three is are to paid. Is, number three is to ask about the claims yeah. process how, and how understand yes. how long is it going to take and what does it involve? And who pays it first? Does the owner pay it and get it, go fight with the insurance company to get it back as a reimbursement? Does the insurance company pay the veterinarian directly how does that work? What does that look like? And pick one that is right for your family's financial situation. Yes. And yes. um, and then don't forget that if that changes. Yeah. So, um, but I do also like the pre-existing conditions are a red flag. Like be concerned about that. Um, but we would encourage you to join the 3% of Americans <laughs> who, who have pet insurance um, and consider that. Especially, and I, and another reason that we wanted to have this is because I don't know if everyone's aware, maybe you've been living under a rock, the number one breed in the U.S. right now is the Frencher, oh the French God. Bulldog. It's so uh, unfortunate. Yes, Terrible. it's not unfortunate. I Super love unfortunate. Them. I love they, them. They, they, but, they knocked out the Labrador. They I'm did. Talking. They did. I know. Um, but um Frenchies need a lot of care. They're a very high maintenance breed, whether they're well-bred or not well-bred. It doesn't matter. Um, you're you're going to need to be with your veterinarian uh, a lot. So a get a veterinarian you trust and B look into pet insurance. Um, yeah. and to do that, check out the canine review to get your best info. Um, yeah. And I guess, um, that's, I mean, I also, I also think it's, it's like, do your vet a favor and get pet insurance. Cause it's so yeah. you're, you're such a better relationship with veterinarians when, when you remove that piece of the, it's just such a nice thing to be able to have I, a conversation about, yeah. about focusing on the kids on the care. care I, I would, I would also, money. yeah, I would also add, it's not like human insurance where everyone just assumes you have insurance. And I, right. I would talk right. to your veterinarian because we're yep. still sort of bespoke care and we're sort of one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. It's really, really good care. Talk to your veterinarian when you get insurance. Hey, let, let, before yes. something yes. goes wrong, right? Because yes. I have insurance. Here's the deal. I just want to let you know. I I'm always, okay with this. Yeah. You're yeah. a team, right? You're you're an animal well-being team, team, right? Yeah. And it, and as much as I, I probably sound like I hate insurance, I do. They're a necessary thing to have, and it would be a good thing for well you said. to get, right? You have to well get said. it. Just make sure that you're doing the right thing for you and include them 
on yeah. the team, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's just what everybody. I mean, I think I think most support. veterinarians are, are relieved when they find out a client has pet insurance. insurance. Yeah. yeah, which is different than it was, you know, a, a decade or, or half a decade ago. Yeah, they because it used worry about it. Like I don't know, I'm going to get screwed right, here, right? So. Right, it, right. It, well, no, it used to be when people said they had insurance. I'm like, oh, they're going to have a bad day. Yeah, bad day for them. <laughs> they presumed they presumed that everything was covered because their right. pet was sick, and it turned out it wasn't right. Right. the time. Right. So yeah, they're so, ready for that fifty dollars copay on a twenty five thousand dollars. I mean, right. I, okay, not twenty five thousand, like but like a human deal, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and it doesn't right. matter whether it's five dollars or five thousand dollars. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Right. And so sure. it, it wouldn't matter how expensive it was or wasn't. So anyway, so yes. Yeah, so check into pet insurance, check the canine review.com before you do that. Um, anything else that you think one more, anything like any last thought you have for us, Emily? Um, uh, just what we talked about, about, about just paying attention to who pays for the information you're consuming. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Just in general, right? Yeah. That's, I was going to say that's in general. Be critical. Yeah, <laughs> the critical thinking good. skills did point. not go out of style. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Emily Brill of the Canine Review and talking Friday. all about pet insurance. I love that you're so passionate about pet insurance because that is a pathway for um, incredible animal care. And that is what we love here um, on Chats with the Chatfields. So thank you so much. I uh, That's all I have. Um, Jason, is that all you have? No, the Canine Review is awesome. Go check it out. You got a lot of information and just keep in mind it's disinterested Thank third you. party, right? That's sort of the best way to put it. So that's right. Okay, so that's it. The caninereview.com. And we I think we've said it enough times. You should be there already on your computer. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And we'll catch y'all on the next episode. Thanks, guys. The Professional Animal Care Certification Council, or PAC, brings independent testing and certification to the pet care services industry. Is your dog's daycare or boarding kennel or a groomer man? by pack certified professionals don't know if you don't know you gotta ask look for the pack emblem at your facility to make sure that your pet's receiving the highest level of professional pet care because we all know it's safer in a pack your pack ce code for this episode is cc2200082 this episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. <laughs>